Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and apart from swinging nunchucks around in my backyard, today we're going to talk about speed ramping, which is taking footage, slowing it down, and speeding it up in parts to show off and highlight movement. I've had a lot of requests about this, so uh, let's fire up After Effects and make speed ramps, an After Effects tutorial with some nunchucks. So, the first thing we need to do in After Effects is import some footage. Actually, the first thing to do is make some footage, but I'm just going to import some and then we'll talk about making it. I've imported some, I'm going to drag it onto this make new composition thing, and now we're going to talk about what I made. Basically, I just went outside, filmed myself swinging some nunchucks around, because I am so awesome like that. One thing I'm going to tell you about it though, is I recorded in 60 frames a second. Usually, things are recorded in 24, 30, 23 point blah blah blah, and this case, we are doing it in 60. We're going to play it back in 24, meaning we have 60 frames per second. When we play back in 24 frames a second, we have more frames than we did before, so the clip will now be longer and slower. So that's what that means. Now, since we're going to be time remapping this, we'll actually be able to take all of those frames and then we can condense them, stretch them, squish them, move them around. Time remapping and speed ramping are essentially synonymous, but with speed ramping, what we're doing is we are easing into and out of regular speed, making things go faster and slower than normal, and then bringing them back to normal. So it's a smooth transition between speeds, and we're going to go through it hopefully one step at a time. Don't want to confuse anybody, and uh, we'll all get there eventually. The first thing I want to notice about this footage is that there is no motion blur on me. I'm not really doing anything exciting here. Hold on. And you'll notice when I'm swinging these things around, even though they're swinging at a fairly fast rate, there is no motion blur in this area. That's something that's really important for slowing things down. In order to do that, you need a lot of light, and then you need to take your shutter speed and crank it up. I'm at shutter speed 1000 out here, and that's because the shutter speed has to be at least what the frame rate is, but in order for you to reduce the motion blur, you need faster shutters. So if you're going to be doing this thing, think very fast shutter speed, high frames a second. That's about it. I shot this on a Canon 60D, so if you have Canon DSLRs, you can probably achieve the same effect. Tragically, it's 1080 by 720, so it's not full HD, but that's just one of the limitations of the camera. If you want a better camera, go out there and get one. You know, this is just my daily, so... That's just how it is. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this composition, which has all the properties of the footage I dragged on to make it. I'm going to go Composition Settings, and then under Frame Rate here, I'm going to change that to be 23.976. So we're going from 59 down to 23. Technically, we're going from 60 down to 24, or the close approximation to those. And we're going to use that. Hit OK. So. Nothing has really changed. The duration hasn't changed. This is still exactly as it was. But what we'll see when we go layer, time, enable time remapping, and then we look at the values here, as I scrub through, we are at value 802 on the timeline. We're at frame 805 in here. So there's a bit of a disconnect. And the further you go, the stranger that disconnect becomes. So that is something that is important to remember. So just keep in mind, we have 60 frames a second, so about 0.4 times as much as we need to fill up this time, so we have that much more to play with. So let's go in here and let's time remap some stuff. Let's do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to a spot where I'm holding the nunchucks. So right here, I'm gonna set a keyframe in my time remap, and then I'm gonna go ahead, I swing them around a bit, like so, I put another keyframe there. Now we're gonna look at this wonderful uh, graph editor for the time. Because I haven't changed any of the values, one thing you'll notice is that we are all at 1.0 seconds per second. That is the value of the speed at which we're at. If I take, say, these last two things here, and I start squishing them together, you'll notice we get this bump. And what's happening in that bump is that it is now moving at a value of 1.52 seconds per second. So anything above this line is too fast, and anything below that is slow. So what you need to understand at this point is just that things below here 
are going slow, things above here are going fast. And then you can drag these around and alter them and do all sorts of fantastic things and drag them out. But always keep in mind that if you want to return this thing to baseline, you're really going to have to stretch and skew and we'll just work with this thing. So as you can see, slow, slow, and then it's going to speed up again. So working with this curve is going to determine how things are. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to trim the comp here to be from here to about here. Trim comp to work area. So we have just enough to play with here. So now we're going to take these and I'm going to easy ease them. And when you easy ease them, the values go down to zero. But that's not exactly what we want. We want the value here to start at regular. So I'm just going to double click on it and I want it to be at one second per second for each of those. And then I want it to gradually come down. I want to reduce speed down to, I guess, what would be the apex of a turn or something, somewhere around here. So I'll set a keyframe there. I know I would like that keyframe to be at 0.4, which is the maximum tolerance we can have for slowing this down. And then eventually I know I want it to go right back up, right back up to one. So it's gonna dip down and come back up. Now what we need to do is make sure that things aren't dipping below this value here, because that is sort of our, our floor for this kind of thing. So what I'll do is I will drag this around and I will alter the handles here to sort of get the look that I'm after. And that could involve pinching this this way, moving it in this way, uh, doing all sorts of unmentionable things like this, but in general, this is the kind of shape that you want to attain, is sort of a soft valley like this. So it generally comes in, slows down, and then speeds right back up. And that's the basics of speed ramping. If you want to get into more advanced stuff, it's really a matter of timing your points so that things that you want to be super slow, like I'll just find a nice there, this is a cool handover here, so I want this point to be super slow. So I set a keyframe, and then I edit this down to be 0.4, because I know I want it to be as slow as I can tolerate at that point. And then eventually I want it to speed back up around here. So I'll set a keyframe there, and then alter it to be back at regular. And then I just have to play with the keyframes all in here, to make it the way I want. Now it could be something like it's going super fast and then it slows down and then it gradually comes back up and it's all down to the manipulation of these little handles right in here and getting these kinds of S curves in and these kinds of other types of curves. I don't know what those are called. It doesn't matter but the idea is you want to create these kinds of shapes to create interesting motion throughout time. Yeah, that worked out pretty well. So you can see how it's flowing and you just have to be aware of what action is going on, where you're putting keyframes, what are you highlighting, and all that stuff. So that is the basics of speed ramping. Now, something I'll tell you, why are we putting in this 0.4 uh, floor to things? Why don't we want anything to go beyond that floor? Well, let me just show you what happens when we do go beyond that floor. Okay, so we're going down into the 0.22 area. So I'm gonna start going ahead frames, and you can see even though the playhead is moving, the frame is not updating. This is because there are fewer frames to display than we're requesting. So we stretched it too far. In these instances, it can be helpful to use something like, say, Twixter to tell After Effects what's happening in those frames because here's how After Effects figures it out for itself. We use this thing called frame blending. So when you turn frame blending on, and then you turn frame blending on for the comp, it can do one of two modes. The first is this sort of ghost mode where it looks at the one frame, and then it looks at the one on the other side, and it says, okay, I will just put these over top of each other at a certain amount of opacity for each until one meets the other, and that's about it. That's as good as I can do. Or you can ask it, to figure out what that frame would be 
and I've used purposely this geometric house siding background so you can see how badly it fucks that up. It has no idea. It is completely out to lunch with what's going on and it looks very strange when it starts to do that. And this is the sort of weird thing that can really mess up your day. So this is why people often go with something like Twixter where you can say, you know, here are the splines which dictate where the movement is going to be and here are some things to ignore, here are things to look at. So that's where a third-party plugin like Twixter, which I don't use very much, this is one of those things where After Effects kind of falls on its face. There are a lot of tricks you can use to get around it. For example, if I recorded myself on a green screen, it would be easier because alpha channel information is easier to understand than pixel information because it's, it's more binary. Um, but it's going to make mistakes if you start doing this. So, like I say, don't resort to it and don't push your footage too far. So, just you know, let it be, let it, let it be, like John Lennon says, and you should get out of this all right. The other solution is to get a very expensive and powerful camera that can shoot a thousand frames a second. That's the sort of thing that the slow-mo guys do, and it's beautiful footage, and if you have the money, definitely get it, but the prosumer Canon 60D does a fairly good job of slowing this down. I mean, for any kind of backyard horrible kung fu movie isn't this just about good enough for you or you know maybe it's not i don't really know what you're up to or what your standards are but you know you can see it's pretty cool with uh, what it's got going on and it should be enough to show off your skateboarding tricks etc etc just remember though don't go below that floor and maintain your curve maintain a nice fluid curve and let the puckering and bloating happen let these these above things happen that we spike and then we slow we spike and then we slow that's the sort of thing that we naturally expect and it was made very popular in things like the matrix and shaw brothers movies and stuff like that and uh, hopefully that helps anyway i'm evan abrams uh, hopefully this helps you with speed ramping i've had many requests about it to talk about it not as many as i've had to discuss twixter but i think we covered everything i feel about that during this tutorial anyway Hopefully this helps. Uh, if you have any questions about this process, speed ramping, the time remap, the graph, let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out as best I can. If you want to talk about motion graphics and VFX, then, you know, leave a comment about that too or hit me up on Twitter at EC Abrams or get involved on the Facebook page. And uh, definitely subscribe to this channel if learning about After Effects and motion graphics and VFX is something you want to do because it's something I talk about every week. There's a new tutorial here every week and sometimes there's a vlog throughout the week uh, randomly it goes up and nobody likes them but anyway i'm evan abrams thank you so much for watching and uh, i will see you around the internet hopefully next time if you subscribe definitely subscribe to the channel thank you very much and goodbye